Have you ever watched the news and seen images like these? The raw power of a hurricane is both terrifying and awe-inspiring. These massive storms with their swirling winds and torrential rains can reshape entire coastlines and leave a trail of devastation in their wake. But have you ever wondered what makes a hurricane so powerful? What atmospheric conditions come together to create these colossal storms? A hurricane is not just a storm, it's a complex system driven by the interplay of heat, moisture, and wind patterns. Hurricanes form over warm ocean waters and can cause significant damage when they make landfall. Hurricanes also play a role in the redistribution of heat from the equator to the poles, influencing global weather patterns. They can cause severe weather, including heavy rainfall, high winds, and storm surges, leading to significant impacts on human communities and natural ecosystems. Let's look at these powerful storms. The first hurricane is in the northern hemisphere, and the second is in the southern hemisphere. What do you notice about these two hurricanes? Did you know that hurricanes spin counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere? I wonder why. Let's use what we already know. We've talked about wind and heat transfer in the atmosphere. How do these work together to impact global weather and climate phenomena? In this lesson, we will learn how different factors like wind and heat interact in a process called atmospheric circulation. We'll also learn about a pattern called the Coriolis effect and learn how it impacts weather systems, including hurricanes. It's a windy day. I know that I have atmospheric conditions to thank for the weather, but why does it feel like the wind blows in different directions and at different speeds at different times? I thought convection currents in the atmosphere caused warm air to rise and cool air to sink. Those are consistent vertical movements. What else impacts wind? Pause the video here and record your prediction. Wind is the movement of air. Wind can be small, localized air movement or large-scale global air movement. While it is true that convection currents in the atmosphere cause warm air to rise and cool air to sink, there are lots of other factors that play a role in wind. Pressure gradients, altitude, and the influence of other weather systems all play a role in determining wind. The tilt of the Earth also has a big impact on wind. Not all areas on Earth receive the same amount of direct sunlight. The Earth's tilt causes uneven heating and therefore different convection currents at different latitudes. These convection currents create a continuous loop of air movement. This is atmospheric circulation, the large-scale movement of air through the Earth's atmosphere driven primarily by the uneven heating of the Earth's surface by the sun. This circulation redistributes heat from the equator to the poles and plays a crucial role in determining global weather patterns and climate. There are four key factors to atmospheric circulation. We've already discussed two factors. The first is the uneven heating as the equator receives more direct sunlight and is warmer while the poles receive less direct sunlight and are cooler. The second factor is the air movement caused by convection currents. So what are the other two factors to atmospheric circulation? Think about other factors that impact weather and climate. Pause the video here to record your ideas. Do your best. Did you remember the Hadley cell, Farrell cell, and Polar cell we learned about earlier in the unit? Convection currents form these distinct cells at different latitudes, which then create wind belts. 
This is the third factor in atmospheric circulation. These wind belts, the trade winds, westerlies, and polar easterlies, blow across the globe in specific directions. But the Earth is spinning as these cells move wind, which impacts the direction of the wind. This brings us to the fourth factor. It's called the Coriolis effect, and it has a huge impact on weather. Imagine you're standing at the center of a rotating carousel and trying to roll a ball straight across. What would happen? As the carousel spun, the ball would appear to curve from your perspective on the ride. Similarly, on the rotating Earth, moving air curves to the right or left depending on the hemisphere, rather than traveling in a straight line. This is the Coriolis effect, the deflection of moving air due to the rotation of the Earth. This deflection influences wind patterns and weather systems across the globe. It's important to note that the Coriolis effect isn't caused by wind. Just like the carousel example, the Coriolis effect is a result of Earth's rotation, and this rotation affects moving air and water masses on our planet. The Coriolis effect is not the same at all points on the globe. It's stronger near the poles and weaker near the equator due to the varying speeds of rotation at different latitudes. So how exactly does the Coriolis effect impact wind patterns? Let's put it all together. Near the equator, the warm air rises and moves towards the poles. But because of the Coriolis effect, it curves and creates the trade winds. Earth's rotation deflects the air moving in these convection currents. Imagine you are standing at the equator while the Earth rotates. In the northern hemisphere, the wind is deflected to the right, and in the southern hemisphere, it's deflected to the left. So wind belts in the atmosphere are impacted by convection currents, varying amounts of direct sunlight, and the rotation of the Earth deflecting the wind and causing it to curve. Atmospheric circulation and the Coriolis effect have a big impact on weather and climate. We know the Coriolis effect deflects wind directions, shaping global wind belts, and impacting climate patterns. But it also influences the rotation of cyclones and anticyclones, affects the ocean currents that distribute heat globally, shapes jet streams that steer weather systems, and helps define climate zones through the distribution of heat and moisture. Understanding the Coriolis effect is crucial for comprehending how these dynamic systems interact to create the diverse weather and climate patterns we experience around the world. Hurricanes are a perfect example of the Coriolis effect in action. In the Northern Hemisphere, hurricanes spin counterclockwise because the Coriolis effect deflects the winds to the right. In the Southern Hemisphere, they spin clockwise because the winds are deflected to the left. Atmospheric circulation is complex, but don't lose sight of the big picture. Heat transfer and wind patterns in the atmosphere and Earth's rotation determine air movement across the globe, impacting weather and climate patterns. In your lesson activities, you'll have the opportunity to explore even more examples of how atmospheric circulation and the Coriolis effect impact weather and climate. You'll investigate multiple weather and climate patterns, including hurricanes. You'll analyze three hurricanes that have actually happened in the 21st century and examine their impact on humans. How do you think atmospheric circulation will play a role? Brainstorm some ideas now and keep an eye out for this activity. As we went through the lesson today, we learned how wind patterns and heat transfer in the atmosphere impact weather and climate. The way wind and heat interact is called atmospheric circulation, and there are multiple factors that play a role in this circulation. 
We can explore these interactions in the Coriolis effect, which plays a big role in global weather and climate patterns. So next time you feel the wind blowing or see a news story about a hurricane, remember, atmospheric circulation is part of a huge interconnected system powered by the sun and spun by our rotating planet. I'll see you next time. Hey, hey.